From the soundstage in the digital media classroom here at Wellington High School, welcome to another episode of Dialogue with the Dukes. Today's show is being brought to you by the Bread and Brew Restaurant, located on the southwest corner of Route 58 and Route 18 here in downtown Wellington. Today we are continuing with our Thrive Project and the mind-body-spirit aspect of Thrive, and today we are honored to have Miss Jenny Arts. Ms. Arts is the Executive Director of Main Street Wellington, and we're glad to have her with us today. She, among other things, is going to be talking about volunteerism and how it relates to the Mind, Body, Spirit program. So Jenny, welcome. Glad Thank to have you, you with us. Um, first of all, I do want to talk about uh, your duties as the Executive Director of Main Street Wellington. Uh, I want you to talk about what you actually do for Main Street Wellington and how it actually is involving uh, Thrive as a partner uh, in the Mind, Body, Spirit project. Sure, sure. Well, Main Street is a uh, organization that's a part of National Main Street and Heritage Ohio, and we do a lot for not only the businesses downtown, promoting them, encouraging visitors to come and shop and eat and play, we also do a lot of the events for um, the community. So, um, and, and, and also in addition to that, we, we work on um, the more beautiful aspects. So flowers, signage, um, helping building owners with facade renovations. We do a little bit of everything just to kind of improve the quality of life for, for Wellington. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you said that there's a national concern that, that, you, that you're actually part of, what's that? Um, it's National Main Street Association, and then Heritage Ohio is kind of the Ohio body that, that may, more or less governs us. There's, mm -hmm. there's certain things that we have to do to be and remain a, an accredited Main Street mm -hmm. um, organization. Now, we, we didn't talk about this, but um, I, I read, it seemed like several months ago, something about the fact that they're going to take down trees along the streets because apparently the roots are causing problems with the sidewalks and things like that. Yes. I love trees. Why are you going to cut down trees? Well, I'm not cutting them down. <laughs> um, actually, it, it, it's more of a maintenance issue, but they are replanting the trees and they're going to choose the same uh, trees, I believe they're locust trees, mm -hmm. because the, the leaves are so small, they're easier to clean up, mm -hmm. um, but it is becoming a hazard that you'll, you'll see when you walk downtown that there's a lot of buckling of sidewalks. Is that, is that right? um, also, they, they've kind of lived their life. They're getting a little too big how, for how, the area. How old are they, do you know? I believe they're maybe 20 years old. Oh, is that right, really? I'm not 100% sure, so don't quote me on mm -hmm. that. But I know uh, originally the village was going to try to start that process last summer, right. and then the filming of White Noise yeah, came right. in and uh -huh. set everything back. Uh -huh. So uh, I don't know when they're going to start. I'm sure it's when the weather um, becomes nice again. So, but they will be replanting the trees, and and I believe they, they are also fast growing, which mm -hmm. is why they picked that. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I think you just brought up something else that I had a question about. <laughs> sure. how, how were you involved? How was Main Street and Wellington involved, if they were, with the filming of the movie? I, um, I was fortunate enough to help one of the scouts who came out early on um, looking for certain places to film. Uh, they were looking originally to film one of the doctors, and obviously none of us have seen the film yet, but no. there's a part where they were looking for a 70s style doctor's office. Okay. And so we were going through buildings and empty apartments and, and trying to scout that out, mm -hmm. and I was just trying to connect them to different people. And so um, so it was, it was really uh, wonderful to um, work with Jane Streeter, was one of the um, main folks that we worked with. Um, mm -hmm. She was hired by Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, to work with the businesses and just to try to communicate back and forth between businesses in the village. And it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I too. Um, obviously, Main Street Wellington and you yourself are involved in a lot of events within the village. And I want to talk about two of them. First of all, uh, there's something called First Friday. First Friday events. What's First Friday? First Fridays we've been actually doing for over two years now, and the whole goal is on the first Friday of the month, so it happens every month. Yeah. Although, this month we had to postpone because of the snow, no, so right. first Friday is actually next Friday, February 18th. Okay. Uh -huh. um, but we, we plan a theme, and so um, the theme this month is go for the gold in Wellington revolving around the Winter Olympics. Okay. So, um, we try to attract people downtown, either residents or even visitors, and 
go to different businesses that are participating, restaurants. We try to get them to do some sort of an activity. Um, it might be a craft, it might be a little game. Um, maybe they're just having a special sale. I know sometimes the resident, or I'm sorry, the restaurants mm -hmm. will give a discount mm -hmm. for anyone who buys dinner that sure. night. Or not a discount, um, they will give to a certain charity. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it's to get people downtown. Um, it's relatively, I mean, you could do the whole event for free and still win a prize. Mm -hmm. um, just if you spend a little bit of money for every $5 you spend, around town you get additional prizes okay. or tickets for the prize okay so it's it's a fun event it gets people out um knowing what's in town i know a lot of feedback we've had i've never been in that business before so right. we're kind of almost like nudging people sure. into a new environment um it promotes our businesses it it provides some exercise you sure. have to walk around a few blocks sure. Um, and it gets a little bit of business downtown. Mm -hmm. So, and then also some of the themes are based on um, a cause. Like we've got um, uh, April 1st is autism acceptance. So we, we did that. That's the only theme that we, um, we have continued um, just to, to talk about how um, so many lives are, um, you know, they experience autism in their family. Mm -hmm. And here's different resources that mm -hmm. you can you can do. We've done them on farmer appreciation. Mm -hmm. We've done um, gardening. We've done a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. The one coming up in March is, um, it's March 4th. And then first Fridays are always 4 to 7 p.m. Okay. First Friday, 4 to 7. There's always something going on. Mm -hmm. um, it is called Have a Ball in Wellington. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to have some, I just talked to Mr. Bowman, to try to have different groups um, that revolve around sports mm -hmm. come downtown and they could do outreach, they could sign people up, they could fundraise. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hoping to have Wellington Soccer Association there too. And also um, Thrive helped get the pickleball courts in town mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So um, from four to six, not the whole time, but from four to six at the town hall, they will be doing a um, demonstration on pickleball mm -hmm. and uh, people can try to play. And so that'll be really fun. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly hope people come out on yeah. March 4th and see what having a ball in Wellington is all about. Yeah. Well, we've talked a lot about uh, so far about Main Street Wellington and some of the events that are being involved. When we come back after this message, we'll talk specifically about Thrive and specifically volunteerism within Main Street Wellington and within the entire village of Wellington. This is Dialogue with the Dukes. Cut. Excuse me, sir. Do you know a good place to get coffee around here? Yeah, we got bread and brew right here. I'd say it's the best coffee I've ever had. If you're looking for a nice little place to have breakfast, lunch, or even dinner, then Bread and Brew is the place for you. They have an array of many different sandwiches to choose from. They have delicious bakery goods such as scones, danishes, cinnamon rolls, bagels, glazed donuts, and even more, like carrot cake, cookies, and they even make their very own freshly brewed coffee. They are located on North Main Street in Wellington, Ohio, and can be contacted at 440-647-0082. Welcome back to the second half of this episode of Dialogue with the Dukes. We want to make sure that if you want to get something tasty to eat, visit the Bread and Brew restaurant located on the southwest corner of Route 58 and Route 18 in downtown Wellington. We've been talking with Miss Jenny Arts. She's the executive director of Main Street Wellington. And as we've learned, Main Street Wellington is actually a corollary, if that's the right word to use, of a national thing called uh, Heritage Main Street. Is that what it's called? Heritage Ohio Heritage. and the National Main Street Association. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> Now we want to talk specifically, as we, in fact, we learned during the first portion of this uh, episode, we learned about all of the things kind of going on, how much volunteerism actually goes on within Main Street Wellington, and how Main Street Wellington actually is involved with so many of the volunteering efforts within the village to actually promote the village itself, and the events not only within the uh, you know, Main Street, but also within the entire village. 
So now we want to talk specifically about volunteerism and of course Thrive being a big part of volunteerism in the Mind Body Spirit Project. So uh, Jen, um, Thrive is a partner of Main Street Wellington. Uh, what does actually, what, you know, what role does Main Street Wellington play within the Thrive aspect of it and specifically volunteerism? Big question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are a partner. Um, we, our role is more to help promote. Um, I specifically help a lot with uh, creating events that we can have that healthier tie-in. So, um, so anytime there's something that comes across that we want to do, I will always think, okay, how can Thrive be involved? Mm -hmm. And to, to just, you know, like the winter challenge that, that gets people out um, in Wellington, seeing what's, what's going on and, and promoting just a, a, a better quality of life. Mm -hmm. So um, as far as volunteering, um, it, it's really proven. I don't have the science here and I'm not a scientist or a doctor, but I know just personally, um, I think of volunteering like a hub. You, you get as much as you give. Uh, I think it, it really promotes, and we'll talk a little bit more about it, it, it helps your body physically, mm -hmm. your mind, and your spirit. Mm -hmm. um, well, since you brought that up, um, <laughs> how does volunteering actually improve one's mental and emotional uh, characteristics or health? Well, I think a lot of it is just finding that connection. And so um, just getting out, or, or even if anyone physically can't, there's still ways that you can volunteer from home, whether it's being a part of a call center and helping someone through an issue. Um, it can be something as simple as, um, you know, learning about a topic. It, it might be a perfect way too, because it's something that you get out of it, you may um, either discover or cultivate like a new hobby. And it could go as far in, in helping you decide on a new career. Mm -hmm. So I definitely encourage young people especially to volunteer because they may not really know what they want to do at 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. And so the more exposure they can have okay. to different topics, nonprofits, whatnot, they might decide, hey, I really have a passion for this. Mm -hmm. So I think that really helps your mind. Obviously, the more you do, um, even if you went to a nursing home and played cards with someone or um, did puzzles. That's keeping your mind more sharp, mm -hmm. but again, it comes back to that human interaction. And I think that really helps you feel that connection, feel um, camaraderie, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, now, let's say there's somebody sitting at home and they say, well, you know, I might want to volunteer, but I don't know where to start. Um, and they always say that by volunteering, it, it, it enriches my life. Talk about that. How would volunteering actually enrich your life? Well, I think, again, with keeping your mind sharp, um, getting that connection, but also when you do a good deed, whether it's just a random act of kindness, or you help a neighbor, or you return a lost item, you do feel, you do feel proud of yourself, you feel that pride, you feel um, satisfaction and some gratitude. Maybe uh, someone who may crochet blankets for um, you know, someone in a nursing home or maybe a cancer patient. Mm -hmm. It also helps you think about being grateful for your life. Like, oh, I'm, I wanna help this person, but I'm so glad I'm not going through that. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of emotions, um, but I do think, more importantly, you just, it'll, it'll fill you with those positive feelings. Um, like I said, it's like a hub. Mm -hmm. The more you get, the more you get back. Mm -hmm. so. well, well, a good interviewer always picks out certain words that uh, the interviewee <laughs> says, and you brought up the word connections. Um, how, how will connections, how will they become more meaningful in somebody's life? Uh, and when I say connections, obviously meaning a connection, say, between you and me, as an example. Right. How would that enrich that, you know, making, uh, making, shall we say, the connections, making it better, uh, better uh, with, oper uh, I say operating, that's right, working with others, I should say, okay. something like that. Well, I think anytime um, you meet, especially new people, mm -hmm. and you start to learn about them and their lives and you share what you're doing, you find those, um, those areas where you do have things in common, or you find things that, you know, you never knew about. Mm -hmm. And so I think, again, it, it, it helps 
your mind, um, it helps your spirit, but more importantly, you learn so much. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, obviously a lot of people connect online, but I do still truly feel like a face-to-face -face interaction and connection is so much more rich. You, um, it, it, you, you not only find out who you are, you find out who you're not. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of growth that mm -hmm. can happen. Even when you are a senior citizen, you can always learn. It's that whole, you can teach an old dog new tricks, you know, and I think volunteering is a really great platform to, to do that, to mm -hmm. be a lifelong learner um, and just enrich your life. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you just brought up something else which we didn't talk about, <laughs> but uh, you talked about social media. Do you think that social media uh, helps volunteering or inhibits volunteering? That is a good question. I do believe that um, in the long run, I think it, it does help because people, if, if done correctly, people can learn about different causes and um, just opens up their world mm -hmm. to, to more things that are going on you know, beyond their little microcosm of their life. Mm -hmm. So I do think it helps. I think uh, it, it, it also is important to try to get young people to volunteer mm -hmm. because a lot of, a lot of the, you'll see anytime you have volunteers, there's a lot of white hair in the room mm -hmm. and, uh, or people who are, are just, you know, getting closer to retirement. We need younger people mm -hmm. to do that because not only physically we need more of that, we just need people to understand the value and that giving three hours of your month is not a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, showing them it will really improve your life mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. so. Well, one of the things that uh, is not only going on within the village right now, but we've also talked about on previous episodes of Dialogue with the Dukes is the physical activity and the physical aspect of uh, how that's part of the mind, body, spirit situation. And we know that right now the winter challenge is going on within uh, Midview, uh, LaGrange, and also Wellington. And uh, it just so happens, since I asked you, both of us are involved in that winter challenge. Um, it ends on Valentine's Day, I believe, February 14th. And the last time I looked at the bi-weekly newsletter, Wellington is in the lead so far. We won last year. Uh, Wellington is so far in the lead again this year. So how does uh, exercise actually, shall we say, reduce stress, uh, provide for physical improvement and things like that within volunteerism? Wow. Well, so we're volunteering right, to be part of this right, challenge. Right, right. So you are volunteering to be part of the challenge. I think anytime you can get up and move, um, it helps your joints. It helps uh, you know build muscle. Typically, when you're exercising, you're breathing better. Mm -hmm. So that helps your mind. That helps your body. Most of the time, you're drinking more water. And water, you know, sometimes if you're having a headache and you're feeling poopy, basically. <laughs> Drink some water because that can really make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So um, all of that, and and depending on what you volunteer at, if you're planting flowers, sometimes I think just getting in and getting dirty and doing something physical, you feel more of that pride of the and the sense of accomplishment. So um, you know, doing this winter challenge, um, getting out and walking, or just doing um, shoveling or whatever it may be, you are. Um, helping your mind, body, and spirit mm -hmm. in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. so. Well, um, as a way to kind of wrap this up a little bit, um, we, we talk about volunteering and how uh, it provides a way to understand your passions, your interests, things like that, which you've kind of expounded on. But as a kind of an ending way to do this, how is volunteering involved with maybe realizing your passions and your interests? Hmm. I think again, especially someone who hasn't volunteered before, mm -hmm. it, it is a good way to open up your your world. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's you're volunteering for a cause, or you know maybe you uh, don't know about something. Mm -hmm. um, typically, when you volunteer, you're going to learn a lot, mm -hmm. and so you will realize, wow, either 
there's an injustice here or wow we really need to recycle properly because right. if we don't it just ends up in the landfill right. and so you know no matter what it is i think with you learning it grows that passion it grows that spark mm -hmm. and so but but you won't ever do that if you don't take that step mm -hmm. well well hopefully uh by watching this particular interview <laughs> and watching uh, the executive director of Main Street Wellington, and you go, gee, that sounds like a really neat thing. How do you volunteer at Main Street Wellington? Oh, wow, give us a call. And, and honestly, um, we have a lot of things coming up. We've got an Easter egg hunt that we need to fill about 10,000 little plastic eggs. Um, oh my, for, yeah, 10,000. 10,000, um, <laughs> that's on April 9th, um, mm -hmm. but we'll be filling the eggs before that. Uh, we've got other activities in the spring. We plant the flowers, the, the flower pots downtown. Mm -hmm. We also have a um, Keep Lorain County Beautiful cleanup on May 21st from 9 to noon. That's going around and kind of getting the areas that are kind of untouched, the, like the window wells or the alleys downtown. And so you get a little dirty and stinky, but it makes it look so much nicer. Um, also, I'm a part of um, Poanis. And uh, we've got our pancake day on April 22nd. They always need help flipping pancakes and serving folks. And that money goes towards um, scholarships for Wellington youth, also for playgrounds. Um, there's so much going on. Um, the Builders Club, which is a new club um, sponsored by Kiwanis, is for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders at McCormick Middle School. Mm -hmm. They're having a blood, uh, a blood drive on, um, oh gosh, I don't have the date here. I want to say it's March 9th, but I'll have to check on that. Um, so even that that's volunteering, you're giving your blood, and you can save a life. Mm -hmm. um, you can also help that club. They're using it as a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things, um, you know, getting involved with your church, um, school, getting involved with um, really any kind of club. Mm -hmm. Nonprofits are really usually desperate for volunteers mm -hmm. um, and I know at Main Street we really try to pair you up um, with a cause that you care about mm -hmm. so maybe you do really love gardening mm -hmm. so yeah we're gonna have you on the design committee and you're gonna help play flowers mm -hmm. okay. or things like that so mm -hmm. if you love parties and event planning you'll you know help us with our events okay. so because we want people to have a good time because if they have fun then they'll probably come back mm -hmm. well you mentioned a phone number and hopefully our editors will be able to put this phone number down uh, so what is that phone number okay. that they can put on the screen uh it is 440-647-3987 um, you also can go to our website mainstreetwellington.org there's even a spot on the menu that says volunteer you can send a little note um, you can stop by any of our events and uh, let us know what you're interested in. Well, there you go. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to have people either call that number or go to MainStreetWellington.org and let people know, that, let you know that they want to volunteer. Well, as a final aspect, um, we know that the marketing director uh, just wrote a specific article concerning Thrive and the Mind, Body, Spirit Project. Could you expound on that? Sure, sure. Uh, Margaret um, Swine said, Swine said? I might have said that backwards. Sorry, Margaret. Um, she wrote an article on just the benefits of volunteering and that you can find on um, Thrive SLC, which stands for Southern Marin County mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of articles on there. There's recipes, there's um, activities that are going on around um, the county, um, and, they, and they talk a lot about mind, body, spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly hope that uh, you have benefited uh, from listening to uh, Jenny Arts about, uh, as, as the director, I should say the executive director of Main Street Wellington, the whole idea of volunteerism and how it can help your mind, body, spirit within the Thrive program. And we hope that uh, by watching this, you'll have, a, 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 first of all, get an example of what volunteering is like, and maybe even yourself decide, I'd like to volunteer for such and such. And as, it, as you see said, it isn't just with Main Street Wellington, but within your church, with Kiwanis and so on. There's loads of examples with here within the village where you can actually volunteer at. Another good, uh, just one that just popped off the top of my head, nursing homes. Nursing homes can always use volunteers to help with the, uh, the I don't want to use, the, I should say the residents. I'm glad I didn't use that other word, patients. <laughs> 
uh, residents within the nursing homes, they always want to have people come in and just work with them or talk with them, play cards, whatever. So we hope that we've maybe gotten you interested in possibly volunteering for a myriad of different events and things like that within the village itself. We'll be back again very soon with the Thrive Program and Mind by Spirit Project. This is Dialogue with the Deuce.